So here's what we got. I went shopping for tools and found nothing. So I made my own. Solid carbide ball that's brazed in there. Here in the vise, we've got a sheet metal holding fixture. First try. I'm nervous. Oh God. My heart is beating so fast. I should. <laughs> this is insane. Oh my gosh, such a dork. It looks good. I'm going for a bowl shape. So I just did a, basically a sphere. We'll see how it turns out. You can see we were getting a bit of galling in the middle there, and that's when I added the oil, because I think the grease was basically just, you know, gone, worn out, whatever, so. And I'll see about improving this tool path, because you can see as it got toward the middle, it didn't really do the middle, I gotta improve that tool path, but I just wanted to give it a go. It looks really good up here. It looks pretty good. And there's the underside. You can actually see on this side too where it was starting to tear through in the middle. Bottom of this one looks real nice. Having a go at a piece of titanium here, doing the same shape that just failed in aluminum. I'm pretty sure titanium is less formable than aluminum, so I would expect this to fail sooner than the aluminum did, but who knows, we'll see what happens. Whoa, there it goes. In case you're wondering why there's a missing screw here, there's a broken tap and two busted end mills down in that hole, three's enough. So this is gonna be a try in stainless and it's gonna be a cone. I'm trying a new shape here. Pretty warm. A little roughness on the tool. Let's see if it cleans up with Scotch-Brite. The cone that I just did successfully in stainless, I'm trying in titanium. I've got the spindle turning at 20 RPM. I feel like that's kind of arbitrary. I'm just turning it so that the bearings aren't stationary. The, I guess what we'll call cutting or forming feed rate is 80 inches a minute. I tried 100 inches a minute once, seemed a little fast. I tried 30 inches a minute, seemed a little slow. <laughs> I'm like an 80. A bit of galling. Yeah, the surface finish isn't great. I could maybe be using a better lubricant. This is whey oil.
I've been messing around with this a couple weeks now and uh, learned some things. While this is running, let me uh, show you some pieces I've made and talk about what I've changed. All right, so this is my, so this is my very first one. Uh, we had some galling in the middle. And I started using oil. The tool path was pretty bad. And I improved the tool path. Ended up with pretty nice surface finish all around. I was happy with that. And I went to a cone shape. This one's in stainless steel. This turned out really nice. Actually, the stainless is quite thick. This piece got pretty warm while we were forming it. That was kind of interesting. I tried the same tool path in titanium, and that worked out. I like that. And I tried these shapes, which had a little bit of a material failure in here because I was trying to go too aggressively down without enough draft angle. Um, so that was good. That taught me something there. And of course, the same thing happened in titanium. And then we got a clue here about titanium. See how it's it's all warped now? Here's the same, same exact tool path, and I'll have another example in a second. The aluminum stays relatively flat and just kind of the, the bending action happens where you would expect it to. Titanium really has a, has a hard time. So after learning about some limitations here, I changed the shape to this and I learned a new lesson here. This one's aluminum again. Um, I was doing a spiral tool path all the way down to the middle and in the middle a ridge formed, which is not part of the tool path. I don't know if you can see that very well. Can you see that ridge down the middle there? So because of the way that the tool was spiraling down toward the middle, as it got in the middle, I think it was pushing material toward the center, and that's why we've got this little ridge. So I had to try a different tool path, and that's where this one comes in. I started basically chopping this profile into 30 thou thick sections and doing kind of like a, I guess I did a 3D adaptive, but basically like a 2D adaptive on one plane and then dropping it down and doing another adaptive on another plane and working my way down that way. And that eliminated that ridge in the middle. And it's kind of a cool looking tool path. I actually like the way that looks. So then I did it again and I loaded an end mill in and uh, was able to cut the part out and that's pretty cool. So this is the aluminum part that I'm kind of going for and I was pretty happy with the way that turned out. However, I do have a little bit of cupping happen happening in here which is much more pronounced on titanium. So you can see these two side by side. We've got the same exact tool path but the titanium wants to cup up and we can kind of flex it back out but it just springs back. It's very springy. So that's tricky. The tool path is going to have to be modified to give us a different shape. But what's running on the mill right now is basically the same tool path with the end mill cut out. And actually, last time I cut this titanium one out, I blew up an end mill. So we'll see what happens. We'll see how the thinner titanium acts differently. I also started running 135 RPM on the spindle because I figured out about at what angle the ball tip of the tool is contacting the sheet metal at based on how, how far down I'm trying to plunge each time. Um, what diameter is the ball at that contact point? And 135 RPM I think is pretty close to just rolling along the surface. So as it's going feed rate 80 inches a minute, 135 RPM should be rolling and not slipping on the surface. So I'm not relying so much on the grease or the oil to get a decent surface finish. Getting pretty close to the end of the program here where it's gonna to switch to the cutting tool and cut the perimeter of this out. And the last time I did this in titanium, I blew up an end mill. I'm hoping that doesn't happen again. I think it probably will. And I think it's because of the springiness of the titanium. It's, you know, the end mill pierces through and then shit moves and yeah. Here we go. 
cross your fingers. That doesn't sound great. Does not sound good. <laughs> I think it I think it survived. Oh no. There's a tooth chipped off there. And there's what we've got. Looks pretty cool. It's really cool being able to cut it out like that with the end mill. However, the end mill died. In here, there's some crazy deformation happening and how this slot is way wider in the middle. It's because this shape is trying to curl up. And when I cut these tabs, you'll see it. Bam. See how much tension is built up in that? Pinches right together in the middle. Big time there too, look at that. So the thin stuff, wow, the thin stuff actually is curling up even more. So here's three different pieces of material that underwent the same tool path, but this one's aluminum, this one's 30 thou thick titanium, and this one's 20 thou thick titanium. The titanium's grade two. Pretty interesting how you end up with very different parts. That really highlights the complexity of this process. It's the material you're working with, and even the aluminum one, you know, when you put it down like that, you can see how it rocks. So even the aluminum one has sprung back a little bit, but nowhere near as much as the tie. And this is like, uh, that is way out. That is supposed to be, the top of that is supposed to be a flat plane. This one's close. Well, that was pretty interesting. I'm playing around with this because I'm trying to develop a titanium sheet metal product. And I was hoping this method of sheet metal forming would give me some prototypes and be able to kind of rapidly iterate on designs because otherwise if you're forming sheet metal with like a stamping process, you have to make a new die each time. So that's the major advantage of this is you change the tool path and you know, you can end up with a totally different shape and the only difference is the tool path. So I could continue to pursue this to try and fix this warping issue, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it. I think if I wanna make this out of titanium, I'm gonna to have to preheat it and I'm gonna to have to like stamp form it. So that's what I'm gonna be trying next and that's gonna be in the next video. But regardless, it was an interesting thing to play around with. I learned some about, you know, how far you can push it vertically before the metal wants to tear. Aluminum form is really nice. Stainless form is really, really nice. I might play around with this, you know, for future projects, but that's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching. Oh, you could have watched this like two weeks ago on Patreon. Did you know that? You could hop over to Patreon and see all of my video content early and ad free. Please consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.